The last thing we need to cover is doing these same calculations, the mean, median, and standard deviation, with a set of group data. Now I'm going to simplify this. Obviously, the, those calculations are meaningless with our, our uh, categorical data because there's no numbers to calculate with. In our numerical data, we can have a frequency table that isn't in ranges. For example, we might have something that is looking at um, number of cars in a household. So let's say that in this household, or in this survey, we had some people with zero cars, and then one, two, three, all the, all the way up to a household that had four cars, and nobody had more than that. And for a frequency, let's say that we had eight households with zero cars, 41 households that had one car, 36 that had two cars, 12 with three cars, and oh, what are we doing here? Three, three households that had four cars. to find the mean, median, and standard deviation for this. The first one I'm going to find is the mean. To find the mean, or sorry, not the mean, the median. We're going to find the median. To find the median, the first thing I need to know is what n is. From a frequency table, n is just the total frequency. So if I add those all up, if I did this well, that should add up to 100. That's what I was shooting for, at least. And I believe it does. Yep. So N is 100. So for the median, these are naturally in order because of the way they're organized. The position of the median is 100 times 0 0.5, or 50. Now, since that's a whole number, that is telling us that it is between the 50th and the 51st number. Now being in a frequency table, this is going to be a little more difficult. If I had a cumulative frequency, it would be easier. So I'm going to add that here just for a second. Cumulative frequency. Now, less than or equal to 0 is just going to be 8. Less than or equal to 1 is going to be what? 8 plus 41 is 49. I'm not up to 50 yet, am I? Less than or equal to 2, however, is going to be 49 plus 36, 85. They're going to be less than or equal to that. The median, we said, was the, between the 50th and 51st. If there's 49 of them that are less than or equal to 1, 85 that are less than or equal to 2, the 50th and 51st numbers, items, have to be in this range. I'm going to pause there. Do you see what I'm saying? The 49th one is one car. The 85th one is two cars. All of them between 49 and 85 are two cars, which means both the 50th and the 51st one have to be in that class of two cars. Does that make sense? So that is telling us that our median is two. The other way of thinking of that is if I were to list these all out, I would list out eight zeros and 41 ones and 36 twos. The 50th and 51st would both be twos. So that's the median. It's actually a little tricky with the frequency diagram frequency table because it's a little hard to picture that number being in the middle of one of those classes. Now I'm going to erase this column. In your notes, if you want, I'll give you time to rewrite this frequency table right now because we're going to next use this frequency table to find the mean. So I'm just going to pause right here and give you... Okay, so now to find the mean, our first step is for each value 
we're going to multiply the number times the frequency. And let me explain why as we're doing it. What this table is telling me is that we have eight zeros. Well, if I add up eight zeros, what do I get? Zero, right? So zero times eight is zero. I have 41 ones. If I add up 41 ones, I'm gonna get 41. One times 41 is 41. Two times 36 is 72. I have 36 twos. If I added up 36 twos, I would have 72. Three times 12 is 36. Again, 12 threes add up to 36. Four times three is 12. Again, three fours add up to 12. So that is the first step in the mean. The second step in the mean is I want to find the total of this column. So I'm adding those up. 0, 041, 113, 149, 161. So that adds up to be 161 is the total of that column. The third step in finding the mean is divide that total by n. So 161, we already found n to be 100 here. So 161 divided by 100 is 1.61. The mean number of cars owned per household is 100 or 1.61. Any questions on that? So now we're going to look at finding the standard deviation. Now, as always, the first step in finding the standard deviation is to find the mean. We just did that, 1.61. The second step, just like before, we're going to subtract the mean from each value, from each number. So I'm going back up to my table up here. What's going to go in here is the number minus the mean. So 0 minus 1.61 is a negative 1.61. 1 minus 1.61 1 is a negative 0 0.61. 2 minus 1.61 is 0 0.39. 3 minus 1.61 1.39 and 4 minus 1.61 is 2.39. Any questions as to where those numbers came from? This number minus our mean of 1.61. Next just like any other standard deviation, the third step is the square. So 1.61 squared or negative 1.61 squared is going to be 2.59. And I'm just going to round it to two decimal places. 2.59. Negative 0 0.61 squared, or 0 0.37, 0 0.39 squared, 0 0.15, 1.39 squared, 1.93, and 2.39 squared. 
is 5.71. Now this next step is where it is slightly different from doing the, the standard deviation for individual values. We are going to multiply this number by the frequency. The reason we're doing that is this number here, the 2.59, doesn't really occur just once. It occurs eight times. So square times the frequency. So 2.59 times 8 is 20.72. 0 0.37 times 8, or times 41, I should say, fifteen point one seven. 0.15 times a frequency of 36, 5.4, 1.93 times a frequency of 12, 23.16, and 5.71 times a frequency of 3 is... 17.13. Now, step five is back on track with what we'd normally do. We're going to add them up, find the sum. So adding all of those up is going to give us what? Eighty one point five eight, does that sound right? Is that what you get? Okay. Step six divide by n minus one. Well, for this set of numbers, n is 100. We totaled up the frequency to get 100. So we are going to take 81.59 divided by 99. One less than 100. So we get 82.4. Or sorry, 0.824. That would be the variance if we were looking for that. But there's one more step left in the standard deviation, which is square root. So we're going to take the square root of 0.824. I'm just going to use the answer function on my calculator to take the square root of the previous answer. 0.908. Point nine one is my standard deviation. So what that is saying is on average each number in this list is 0.91 units away from the mean. What do you think? A headache waiting to happen? So we're going to do a survey of households, looking at the number of pets per household. And let's say we're in a city where there's an ordinance that doesn't allow more than two. So you've got zero, one, and two. We have a frequency of zero pets. We're going to have nine households. One pet, we're going to have eight households, and two pets, we're going to have three households. For this table, I want you to find the median, the mean, and the standard deviation. 
So find the median first. We'll discuss that in a second. If you get done with that, move on to the mean until we get to that. Let's just give you a check on the median to see if you got that one. To find the median, of course, the first thing we would find is n. If we add those up, we get 20. So the median, the location of the median is then 20 times 0.5, which is 10. Telling us the location of the median, since that's a whole number, it's between the 10th and 11th. So this is 9. The 10th one would be in the category of 1. So both the 10th and the 11th would be there. This is 9. This would be 17 and 20. So 10 and 11 have to be in 1, so the median is 1. How many of you came up with 1 for the median? Good deal. Okay, I'll give you a few more minutes to finish up the mean. So for the mean, first step is to take the, the value times the frequency. So 0 times 9 is 0. 1 times 8 is 8. 2 times 3 is 6, which adds up to, and of course, step 2 is to total those. 0, 8, and 6 add up to 14. The final step for the mean is to take that value, 14, divided by the frequency, or n, which is 20, you get a mean of 0.7. How many of you got a mean of 0.7? Good deal. I'll give you a couple more minutes to finish up the standard deviation. Okay, so the first step in the standard deviation is finding the mean. We already have that done. Second step is taking each value minus that mean. So 0 minus 0 0.7 is going to be a negative 0.7. 1 minus 0 0.7 is 0.3. And 2 minus 0 0.7 is 1.3. Third step is to square that number. Negative 0.7 squared is 0.3. 0.3 squared is 0.9, and 1.3 squared is 1.69. The next step is to take this value, the squares, times the frequency. 9 times 0.49 is... 4.41. 8 times 0 0.9 is 0 0.72. And 3 times 1.69 is, oh, it's not going to be 4, it's going to be 5.07. Everything look kosher so far? Next step, we're going to find the total, find the sum. If we add those all up, we get 10.2, does that look right? So we have a sum of 10.2. Next, we're going to take that sum divided by n minus 1. n is 20, so we're going to divide by 19. Giving us what would be a variance of 0.537. Final step, we're going to square root 0.537. Second square root. Again, I'm going to use the answer function in the calculator so I don't use a rounded number. 0 0.7326, 0.733. If you rounded it to 0 0.73, that'd be fine. My math lab will always tell you what digit to round to, whether it's two or three decimal places or hundredth or thousandth. Two or three decimal places is usually adequate. Any questions? Well, I think I've done enough damage for one night. There is no new quiz this week, but there is a new homework. It is due next, next Tuesday at the start of class. So no quiz, just homework to do for the week.
The computer lab next door is now open for our use. I'll have that open for you if you want to stick around here and work on it. In New Richmond, I'm not sure if there's a computer lab open for you anywhere, but you're welcome to, to find one. I will be in the room here till 8.20 if you need any help. You can always come back and ask me.